So after the snow bank is melted around the truck here, we try to get it running and use it for some work and uh, it's not running good. So we gotta figure out what's going on here and uh, whether it's fuel or whether it's spark. Initially, I, uh, I was mucking around with the carburetor over there trying to get it to run a little better because I have pretty much all new components for the electrical here. And uh, so then I pull the spark plugs out um, to change them and uh, see what they're like and uh, they're wet. So I don't think that it's uh, I don't think it's a fuel issue. If the spark plug's wet, it's getting lots of fuel. Uh, probably a spark issue, not igniting the fuel. So I uh, I got this little tool here, and uh, I use that. And you put it on the you basically put it put it up against the wire, and this this little light here will show you. And it showed that the that in some cases there was no. Uh, didn't didn't look like there was any spark and in other cases it was weak so that's going to bring us back to the coil here but usually a coil either it works or it don't work um, i'm going to check the resistance on that and see what the problem is but i'm leaning more toward the distributor down there and the rotor and uh i don't have one i gotta i gotta order one um, if I'm going to replace that, but I'll take it off and take a look at it. So I'm just going to go through the electrical system here and, and the wires are good. I've changed the plugs. Those are good. We're going to look at the, the distributor and rotor. We're going to check the coil there. And then, uh, on this truck, I eliminated the factory, uh, ignition and I put in an MSD and I got the MSD installed here. So, uh, We'll go show you that in the shop, uh, what's going on there. Here we got our uh, Mopar MSD ignition. And uh, what I, first thing I did was uh, try to pull it out, get it cleaned up and everything like that. Look it all over. These little rubber isolators, they go in between the MSD and the plate that I've built to uh, hold this thing. Well, uh, this one here is busted. And these are all, oddball fasteners i don't know what size they are and as always i like to make things simple so got rid of all that and i just got uh robertson uh, machine screw in there and on the other end we're just going to tack the nuts and uh, so all you need is a screwdriver to remove this thing so what i did was i install it because if if i don't have it installed and i try and put them machine screws and nuts and tack them nuts in place they're likely not going to line up properly so I install this and then i'm gonna i'm gonna tack these down and uh but this being an electrical component here we don't want to damage that so when we're doing this we're going to be patient and we want to put our our ground as close as we can to where we're welding and then we're going to come in here and we're just going to give it a tack once we've gotten an attack, we want to cool that down right away. So I got some compressed air here and I'm blowing that down. I don't want the heat to come into the MSD and, uh, and wreck any, anything with this. So just be patient, uh, make a tack, cool it down. Uh, I've got a tack on both sides, just on the edge where I could, where I could reach it. And then, uh, it's installed and now when you go take it off put it back on you shouldn't have any alignment issues with that so then uh the other thing that i did was uh when you're hooking this thing up i um i used the uh letter stamps in there and i put in here so this is the distributor connection this here is the tack connection and then over on the over on the other side, uh, this is the connector here. And uh, this one here, I didn't stamp it, this one. But if you run down to the end of the end of the wires here, this is for your uh, coil. And in my case, this is the positive. The orange is the positive, black is negative. And uh, clean it all up probably put some primer on there or something so it's not gonna all rust and everything and, and then reinstall it. I don't think there's anything wrong with this in our situation of the uh, of the truck not running right or, or um, you know, with our spark uh, problem. 
Okay, we got that coil out of the truck here and we want to check the ohms, the resistance in this coil. So uh, the primary test will be from negative and positive on these two terminals on your coil. And if I get a good connection here. So we're getting point in, in between 0.5 and 0.7 staying pretty steady there 0.7 and so now if we want to check our secondary we want to we want to probe the main one there and we're going to put this one on uh, our positive and this is going to be our secondary and we we're in around as I was checking in around 11.4 plus so uh, we check the resistance on the coil here, and uh, that's going to prove good because our range is uh, for the primary is 0.4 to 2, and the range for the secondary is uh, 6k to 15k. So uh, we're within spec on that. So now that we've uh, checked our coil, we can uh, have a little discussion and run down what our what our situation is here. I've uh, went through the book here and uh, just to double check what we got for a firing order and our orientation for the slant six because that's what we're working with here. And I wrote that down on the cardboard here. And because uh, what you're going to want to do is uh, I wrote this down before I removed uh, the distributor cap. I wrote down what the firing order was in the truck and I drew that out and then I compared it to the information in the book here. So the firing order sequence one, five, three, six, two, four in a clockwise rotation as indicated in the, in the picture in the uh, book. And this is, this is the front of the engine. This is the rear and we've got one to six for our cylinders. And here is similar to what we have in the, in the truck. Uh, number one position is here one uh, cylinder number one and then our clockwise rotation ends up being as i have it in the truck here five three six two and four so that's all correct you want to check that out because you never know that that could be an issue as well and uh so now if we start from the beginning and we got a rough running engine here we got to go back to uh basically the start right so the three things you need for combustion is air fuel and ignition so you want to break it down in uh in sequence right operation of order and uh the most important i think would be the fuel right so we want to prove our fuel so we've got fuel in the tank we prove our fuel in the lines we prove our fuel to the car and if we don't have uh fuel going to the carb we want to target the pump and uh, if we do have fuel coming to the carb, well then we move on to the ignition. So the ignition, we want to prove our spark, right? So you can remove the spark plug and uh, you can have somebody assist you while you're turning it over to, to see if you got spark. I usually don't have anybody helping me, but um, what you can do is you also you you know you take you take out your spark plug and you take a look at it right and by looking at the spark plug that'll give you an indication on uh, some some of the symptoms and in the back of the book here we've got a, a, a guide that will kind of help you with that but to keep things simple and in in our situation when I pulled the plug these plugs were wet so that told me that it wasn't a fuel issue and uh they're all sooted up here which is basically too much fuel again and so right away i just start thinking okay we got to prove our spark right so when we go back we prove our spark uh start from the plugs right so you want to start from the plugs check them plugs if they all look like they're fine and good uh if you want to change them that's uh, entirely up to you check your wires you're going to be looking for broken insulation uh, loose connections stuff like that and then you're going to go to your distributor and rotor and then from the distributor and rotor you're going to go to the coil 
and then which we've already checked and we've written down here what our numbers were for that which was in spec and then back to your ignition which in my case i've got this uh msd and i like i don't have the factory ignition in there but just kind of work it down in those sequence of events right uh find uh you find something that needs to be repaired repair it and now we go back to the beginning and uh, now that we've proved we got our fuel, we proved we got our ignition, our spark, now we go back and air is last. So air is going to be determined by your choke and your idle setting. So now this is where you're going to fine tune your carburetor for your air and your, uh, your fuel and the metering screws will adjust the amount of fuel that's going in. This is where you're gonna, you're going to set your air and fuel for that ignition. So as uh, when, we, when we took the distributor off in there, so this is the other thing too, people will kind of chase themselves around because they just think that, you know, we got good looking parts, new parts, right? In this, in this vehicle. It can't be the new parts that we've we've put in there, right? Well, not the case. Uh, you can you can buy defective new parts as well. But anyways, on the outside, it looked like it was all pretty good here. We pulled the cap off, and I don't know if you can see in there, but we've got some corrosion. We have some some buildup like right there. We've got some buildup on there, and it might be hard to see, but but this is the the coil where it's where it's uh connected to the rotor here and uh you know that's not good so and then here we might this this might have been war and there's too much of a gap in between our point there and uh, the rotor so that could be an issue as well but if you just take a look in here and then once i pulled the cap off you could see there was like corrosion inside the distributor as well and uh so we're going to get ourselves a new uh distributor cap and rotor i don't have one with me but uh we'll we'll get that and we'll replace that and i do believe that's that's uh the answer to our problem here so yeah just chase it down order of operations uh, stick to the plan and uh, you'll find what the problem is and get her fixed up. We're ready to uh, put that ignition back on there and uh, the original installation had them isolators on so I just cut some uh, rubber with some punches and I do believe the isolators are probably so the vibration doesn't uh, damage the electronic components inside there like uh, solder connections and stuff like that. So. That's my uh, remedy for this. I just put those uh, little rubber washers on there and then we get our, get our machine screws and uh, bolt her down and then we'll install it into the truck. Here we are, uh, gonna put that ignition back in. With the cover on there, we got our coil installed again. Uh, orange is to positive, black is to negative. And then uh, down there, you can see the corrosion and uh, the shape of that distributor down there. So once we get another cap and a rotor, we'll, uh, we'll change that out. So we got ourselves uh, a new distributor cap and rotor here. And if we look right off the bat, it looks like we've got uh, brass connections on the tip there and uh, each one of the uh, ends. And whether or not that makes a difference on this one, it looks like these ones could be aluminum. And uh, I do think that uh, brass is supposed to be the better choice here. So what I also did was uh, they didn't have it marked on the old one here. So I just I had put that sticker on there to let me know that this was number one. When you put the cap back on here, they have it stamped. So that's one. 
And then I just got, uh, like with a paint stick here, I just went and I put uh, the firing order on there. Uh, clockwise, clockwise rotation. So one, five, three, six, two, and four. And uh, so if ever you get uh, these mixed up, uh, you got them written down for reference. So we uh, referenced the manual here. And once we got that distributor cap off, it was all uh, corroded and, and grimy and stuff inside there. And while we got that off, we want to check the clearance in between, like the air gap in between uh, the coil and the, I think it's called the reluctor or something. Anyways, all the information here pretty much says we want about a six thou gap uh, in between these two components here. So you're gonna get down in there, you're gonna try and get rid of some of that corrosion and everything. So spray it on up with something and uh, blow it all clean. Rub it down with some rags, whatever you need to do to kind of clean it up. You wanna remove this coil. And uh, originally it, it had a flathead screw, which uh, didn't wanna come out nice. I always like to change those over to Robertson. I like to have the same screwdriver for everything. So uh, I changed that out. And then you want about a, a six thou gap in between here. And you're gonna, uh, you're gonna adjust this arm with that screw loose and get your gap in there. Uh, the instructions in the book say set it to six and then once you're done tightening it down, uh, put an eight thou shim and if the eight thou shim uh, won't fit in there, then you're good. So if if one of these notches, if your notch isn't lining up for your gap, then what you need to do is you gotta get down and you gotta get a socket on uh, your crank, the bolt on the uh, crank pulley there and turn turn the motor over until you get that lined up so you can check your gap. You just wanna get in there with a, with a long bar and a socket an inch and a quarter to turn that around so now we'll put our uh, distributor back on there once we've got that set and we'll hook everything up and uh, get this thing running and now lastly we'll have to make some adjustments on the carburetor there uh, here we are after we've got it running run pretty smooth uh, just the basics here on the carburetor Underneath your little vacuum thing here is going to be your adjustment screw right there. And when you adjust that, that's going to be just in your idle. So, I don't know, book values are probably, I don't know, 750 RPM or whatever. If you got a tack that you can use a tack to set it to. Uh, personal preference, whatever you go by ear and then so it just seems to run smooth for you. So just the basic step under here is going to be that idle screw that you're going to be setting. And if we go around to the front, this is going to be your metering screw for your fuel and uh, Usually, you'll set that, you'll turn it closed, and then you'll turn it back anywhere from one and a half turns to two turns, should be lost, and then go from there. And the rest is, uh, you know, different carburetors, different vehicles, different settings. The guy has to do some research and figure out for himself uh, to tune these things up. But those two screws fuel in, and idle are uh, the basics. You hit those to try and, try and set a, a nice smooth uh, idle. And then uh, 